What's going on guys? Today I have something that I'm really excited about. It's really special to me. It's something that I've always wanted to do since I started using ham radio. If you go back on my channel about three years ago or so when I first started the channel, one of the first videos that I did, uh, which I'll flash on the screen, was uh, transferring a web page over ham radio. And I made this little program that would basically take PSK31, HTML files, and encode them and send them to a remote point and save that file and you could open it in a browser. And in my mind, I was like, wow, I can actually transfer web pages over ham radio. And that was super cool to me. But now I have something that will allow you to plug into an Ethernet on a computer and use just like a, um, a regular router. Or maybe not router is the word for it, but just an Ethernet connection or a link between two or more devices. I think that's the way to put it. And I know that we have something like that with uh, HamNet or Arden. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting my terminology mixed up there, but it's in the 2. Point whatever gigahertz range. It's not super accessible. But this is technology that you can use as a technician. And it's something that is functional and something that's relatively simple in, in the grand scheme of things once you get it set up. So let's talk about it. Another thing I want to do, I want to go ahead and give a big shout out to uh, someone who made this video possible or organization. And uh, that is the Flag and Torch Society. Robert, uh, KD2UCJ over at the Flag and Torch Society, um, saw me talking about this NPR system, this new packet radio, which I'm about to bring to the table. And uh, he said, he sent me, he, he basically, he basically sent me one and said, hey, try it out. Uh, the Flag and Torch Society is a organization or a group of amateur radio operators that are typically affiliated with the military. I'll put the link to the Flag and Torch Society in the description. And if you guys are affiliated with the military in any way and you're an amateur radio operator or you're thinking about going to the military or, you, or you know, along those lines, go check it out because uh, there's a really great group of hams one of the, the better groups that I've seen. Uh, as you guys know, I wasn't, I don't always jive with the local uh, repeater communities uh, because of my age and the type of ham radio work I want to do. But they are very um, inclusive. So if you're military affiliated and you're an amateur radio operator, go check them out. Anyways, uh, Robert, KD2UCJ, um, saw me talking about this technology. The thing is, I've always wanted to use it. I've talked about it for years. But I never bought it. Well, Robert saw me talking about it and said, hey, if you can, you know, get some videos out there of how to use it and see if it could be functional for the organization, I'll send you one to try out and uh, we'll go from there. So this is the system. It's kind of wrapped up. We need two of them to operate. Unfortunately, uh, I have one here. There'll be one coming probably in the next few days. And then I have a cheaper version coming in in the next week or two. But let's talk about them a little bit. So what am I going to show you? This is the NPR, the new packet radio. That is a, uh, a coin term by a Foxtrot 4 Hotel Delta Kilo who uh, invented this modem. And it is a modem. It is an RF modem. And it is... A uh, basically a packet modem and don't think like APRS because although APRS can do or AX25 can do IP over AX25 with Linux this is a system that you plug an Ethernet port into the modem you plug the other side into your computer and then on the remote end on the 70 centimeter band those modems uh, there's another modem connected to another computer and then all those computers can communicate over the 70 centimeter, centimeter hand band. Throughout trying to get this stuff, I keep getting asked, well, okay, what's the capabilities of it? And I keep saying, like, you know, it's almost up to the imagination what you want to do with this, and it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around. So I'm going to do a series of videos throughout this entire month, and we're going to go from what this thing is to how it's applicable, how it's functional, and how you can use it. And I, I'm so excited about this, this product, um, this technology, that I'm going to cover a lot of these steps in grave depth and make sure that um, there are resources out there for people who are interested in using uh, you know, internet or IP over ham radio that they can come to this channel or come to this playlist that I'm going to make and get started in it. And that um, so there's an outlet that people can see it being used. People can see how to set it up. So today we're just going to talk about 
the NPR itself. I'm going to show you guys the board shortly after, probably in a few days or so, I'm going to show you how to build an operating system like Windows or Linux that is the most efficient to use with this thing. And we'll talk about why we need to do that in a second. So to start out, the original NPR, which you see on the screen here, which is in current version NPR 70 version 05, in, in, invented and in usually um, invented by Foxtrot 4 Hotel De, uh, Del Tequilo. This is an open source hardware, so he has published everything on Hackaday, which the, the, um, the link to the build will be in the description. If you guys just want to build this modem yourself, you can build a modem, you can download the source code, you can flash it, you can do all the things yourself. If not, also the link to buy the product, which I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I, I did ask for a freebie a few years ago, but I was told that they don't make profit on it, so I understand that. Um, but the, the link to the product will be in the description. Uh, if you guys want to buy it or if you want to build it, uh, it's there. And these things, the base model can be built for around, I think it was 70 to $90 in that range, depending on the parts uh, that you get. Now the base model, which is basically the first iteration or the one created by the original creator, right? It, um, it's okay. It, it comes in a really nice packaging uh, if you buy it. Everything, there's like buttons and switches and nice little ports and then casing. So everything's built really nice. The only drawback that I see with it is I think the max power, I could be wrong here, but I think the max power is like 500 milliwatts. So it's under a watt of power. So the drawback of that obviously would be you're not going to communicate super far unless you have an, a very good antenna system. Now, you can also buy a DMR uh, preamplifier or an amplifier um, to pair with this to get 20 watts power output. So that would be ideal. 20 watts on 70 centimeters is going to get you a decent range. Uh, the links that I show you below with the Hackaday article, they contain PDFs of what uh, amplifiers are compatible and what aren't. Because we're doing IP over ham radio, there's a certain expectation of switching um, quickness, you know, when, when they kick on, when they kick off, because you don't want to miss packets. So that's why it's kind of particular. But uh, Foxtrot 4 Hotel Delta Kilo has gone out of his way to test a few of these amplifiers and take reports from users. So if you want that modem package, uh, the price, I believe, after shipping, is like 120 bucks. Again, I could be wrong there. The device is like 90 if you buy it outright, and then there's you know money for shipping. Uh, so if you get that device, you'll get 500 milliwatts of power output. You pair it with the DMR amplifier, which is um, I'll show on the screen here too on Amazon. Uh, I think they're like 130 dollars. You combine that together, you get about roughly I don't know 250 bucks. So and that's with 20 watts of power output. So that's your one option um, if you want that extra power. The model that I bought has has been made from uh, the original one, but it has some enhancements. This one is made by a ham radio operator in Germany uh, with a call sign, I believe that's DO5DSH. Um, it is advertised as the NPR 2.0, the NPR H 2.0. <clears throat> And this is a device that I got in today. I will be getting one more of these, and I will be getting one more base model. So this is the device that I bought. Now, I think after shipping and everything, it was in between $230 $240. That is about $180, $190 after tax for the actual modem itself. And then there's some extra money there for uh, shipping. If it's coming from Germany to America, obviously it's going to be quite, kind of expensive. So the differences in this model compared to the base is you're going to get four to seven watts of output power without a preamplifier just straight out if you, uh, depending on how much voltage you, you feed it. I think uh, he said that 12 volts is around four watts and then when you come up to 16 which is closer to six and a half and then you start pushing it beyond that you, you risk uh, blowing up the, um, some of the parts. But, so that's one of the differences is there's a higher out power output. It's advertised on the page up to seven watts. And there's also a, uh, the chip on here is a little faster at processing. The SRAM 1024K, 
to speed up internal processing. So I chose this because one, sometimes it's hard to get your hands on an amplifier right now, DMR amplifier. And uh, second, it's all in one package. And seven watts or six, five, that's probably gonna be all I need for my purposes. So what am I gonna do with this thing? Well, you notice a couple of things. So here we have an antenna port. That will go to our 70 centimeter antenna. Now, ideally, this is a client server architecture uh, or a master client architecture. So you're gonna have one master NPR in any given region or maybe more, and it will be linked up to maybe a server that's hosting resources like websites and serve, uh, you know, TeamSpeak, servers, Mumble, whatever's unencrypted that we can access over ham. I think you can actually probably link the master to the outside internet too, but you gotta be very careful on what comes back in and make sure it's not encrypted. So that's the master. It's gonna be linked at home. It's probably gonna have an antenna on the roof, you know, your typical at home ham radio setup for 70 centimeter. Now you'll need another one of these boards or the base model. They're compatible with each other. So the $90 one that's open source and this one right here, they can talk to each other. Um, you'll need two and the second one will be connected somewhere else to a different computer and that computer is used to access the resources mostly on the master or to communicate between other clients so this is basically a, an internet connection um, or a giant Wi-Fi spot over the 70 centimeter, centimeter handband right as you if you guys don't know a server uh, is a computer and it's hosting a resource and we call it a server. But if I host a website on my laptop on my home network, I can access it from my computer on my home network. And that's about within my house, right? As far as the ethernet cable will go, as far as Wi-Fi will go, I can access the resources between each of these devices. Now with this, <clears throat> with a technician's license, because it's only a 7 senior handman, I can connect this to a computer that's hosting a web server and I might be able to drive a few miles away, four or five miles away, depending on the antenna height and the power output, hook up another computer and still access that website at home over the hand bands. So if you think about it, the possibilities are almost limitless. They are only uh, really constrained by the fact that you can't use encryption. So you have to pay attention what protocols you're using, right? SSH is secure, it's encrypted, Telnet is not. So you're able to use Telnet to manage your, you know, remote clients and SSH you cannot. And I know that for a lot of people this might sound foreign, that's okay. Because we're going to break this down step by step and I'm going to provide you guys with resources to be able to set something up like what I'm going to set up this month yourselves. And you don't need to know all the intricate details and everybody will be able to see how this works. Uh, but as I was saying, this will go to the antenna. Now, this is the ethernet port. This ethernet port will simply go to the device that you're trying to give access to. So if it's a master, it'll go to your server or, or another client. Um, or if it's a client, it's gonna go to your laptop or go to something, whatever you're using out in the field. Maybe it's a computer set up far away. You know, it could be any number of things. The next thing we have is this little post here, which is gonna be for our power in. And I know that we can feed it 12 volts. We also have, um, okay, UART serial connection. And as far as I know, that's not enabled by default. You have to uh, shorter solder joint, if I'm not mistaken. So this is the device. Ideally, you would want an enclosure for this 2.0 system. The 1.0 looks like it comes with it, or the original design. That is basically what we're going to be talking about this month. So if you, you know, the short version, if you're still kind of lost, imagine a switch connecting a bunch of stuff together, a network switch, and it's connecting a bunch of clients to one together so they can talk to each other. Now, the, th uh, the modem speed over the connection is actually limited by the FCC rules, which in America, I believe it's something... I always get confused in how they measure it, but it's like 100 symbols a second or something or another. Um, symbol, the symbol, it's called the symbol rate. We're only limited to 100. So if my math is correct, that comes out to uh, 
roughly 56k kilobit, maybe a little higher uh, internet connection. And if, if you guys have, I'm sure there's a lot of people on my channel that aren't millennials, right? We know uh, dial-up speeds, that was 56 kilobits. Uh, it's going to be roughly faster than that. So it's not super speedy or anything, but it's very versatile. We're going to put it to the test, though. What we're going to see after we set all this stuff up is I'm going to set up a chat client. We're going to set up an IRC server. We're going to set up a web server to serve web pages and images. We're going to set up a file server to download files remotely over the 70 centimeter handband. And we're also going to set up game servers. So two, maybe two or three game servers. We're going to play video games over the handbands. So really cool stuff coming up this month. I can't wait to get this other device in. What I'm going to show you guys next in the video, this next video, if you're still bearing with me, is how to set up an operating system that is appropriate for this. So keep in mind, this device uses, in America, we're limited to around 50 to 100 kilobits per second. That's not very quick. And because of that, we need to make sure that our operating system is optimized and not sending out garbage data. Windows 10 and 11 was not made for a dial-up connection. We're not, you know, that's Windows XP and lower. We're not doing that anymore. So by default, the operating system ha comes with a bunch of crap that sends out diagnostic data, what you're doing all the time, the tracking, all of that crap. It's all congesting the network. And if you're running and you have one of these connected to your computer, every time Microsoft tries to send what app you have open, or any type of diagnostic data, or starts downloading updates or checking for updates. These things are transmitting every single time, every packet. Every packet, it's looking, hey, can I update? Hey, do you have any updates? Hey, that computer over there, it's got this update. Can I download it? And then it'll start downloading, and you don't want any of that. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up a bare minimal um, Windows 10 install that you can just connect this modem up to and you don't have to worry about all the garbage on the network and that's going to make these things work a lot more efficiently and uh, anyways yeah let's go ahead and get into that in the next video thank you guys so much for watching and uh, again thanks to the Flagging Torch Society and Robert um, there for helping me out here those guys are great it's a really great community go check them out and 73 to you